song. Let me turn it down for they try to take take my little coinage that I'm gonna make from this video. Okay. What's up, you guys? Your girl G here. Welcome back to my channel. Appreciate you for tuning in. Um, coming to talk to you guys really fast about Married to Medicine. I realized I didn't get a chance to finish that. So, um, I did get a chance to do Real Housewives of Atlanta, though. So, y'all make sure to go check that out. But Married to Medicine, you guys, it all, it, it, the drama, the drama, the drama is involving heavily this season. And you know what? I'm not going to lie. I'm quite ready for it. If we really think about how, how the seasons have gone, who's really been, you know, the center of the drama, who's really been, let me fix this camera, it's bothering me, who's really been, um, you know, involved in the most chaos, who's really just kind of like really gotten, as they say, you know, everybody has their season and looks like this is going to be heavily seasoned. Because she has kind of scathed, honestly, with, you know, being able to stay in everybody else's business and being able to, you know, be messy with other people. But nobody's really came after heavily, like, like you know, really like that. Um, uh, excuse the bonnets. I was making some morning errands, dropping my mom off. Um, so I just ain't taking it off yet. So y'all just gonna have to see it as it is. It's literally still 8 o'clock in the morning here. So, yeah, nonetheless, um... Yeah, Miss Heavenly, look, it's looking like it's your season, Miss Ma'am, and I'm actually quite ready for it because Heavenly has, like I said, she has gotten away real good, especially with her little messy boots ass, uh, and she's getting called out for it this season. But nonetheless, you guys, let's go ahead and get into the episode. So, um, we pick up with uh, Miss Heavenly, speaking of, going to see Miss Jackie Jackie, Miss Jackie Boots. Let me roll these windows down because it is hot. Um... Yeah, she goes over to see Miss Jackie because she ain't had no, you know, the, the, the red fairy hasn't been visiting her. The bloody fairy, i.e. that cycle of hers has not came in, you know, a couple of months. And so she's getting a little nervous because that means she might have crossed over the line into the mature club. You know, heavily, she can call everybody else old, but she don't want to, she herself don't realize, bitch, you knocking on the door too. So she goes over to see Jackie and y'all, Jackie is taking off and doing the damn thing when it comes to what we know her for, you know, female, female, you know, hygiene, female, um, importance of, you know, the, the big old, the orgasms to women, you know, just vaginal health, like Queen V as we call Jackie, she has become Queen V because she, I just really appreciate her, you know, trying to educate women on you know, their health, their sexual health, their feminine health, their vaginal health, like all of that is super important. And we need to teach young girls that, you know, early as possible because ain't nobody going to worry about you getting your off, you know, getting yourself off except you. And these niggas show ain't trying to do it. They worry about themselves first. So it's like, come over here, get this little injection in your little veggie vag, your little, your little twat. <laughs> Shout out to Marlo. Get this little shot up in your twat and, you know, let it do what it do. But she heavily goes over to see Jackie and Jackie's, well, you know, you're, you might be a part of the club. So what we're going to do is take your blood work, see your estrogen levels, testosterone levels, heavily say, but you want your money now, a lady, cause I know how you are about your coin. Um, and so right now, heavily's just like, I just, I just, I, I, I can't be no mature club. That ain't mean. It's like, mm, looks like it is today. Um, but yeah, so we move on. Um, we see Contessa and Toya. Now, when I saw this scene, I was kind of like everybody else and was like, hmm, Contessa, Toya, Toya, Contessa, Contessa, Toya, Toya, Contessa. And we know that they've previously literally have not with each other, like they could not stand each other, in particular, Contessa to Toya. And it really kind of all started with her ma making that comment about Toya and Eugene basically getting out of the red and they threw the in the black party. And Contessa was like, so we're celebrating like being an adult, like we're celebrating um, taking care of responsibilities. And hell yeah, they, how do you try to, you save money to pay back your, your, your just dues and then you throw a party to spend more money to celebrate being in the black like that sounds like some shit toya would do and you running your nigga dry eugene is tired toya eugene is tired y'all i honestly i have not liked toya for a good four to five seasons now like it's something about her attitude her energy she's entitled 
Like, she maintains the attitude with Eugene. And we saw the way she disrespected him in front of it. When he finally, when he called her out at the table, it shut up and eat a biscuit. And she threw it at him. And everybody had the same reaction. Like, damn, Toya, like, for real? Like, she's just, I don't like her energy. Um, but yeah, no. So she's sitting out with Contessa and her little daughter. Y'all know she got a mouth on her. She do not mind saying her 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 mind and contestant like she 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 dangerous because i think she said something about toya's sons um but she's basically like you know uh i i I don't know how i'm feeling about heavily and toya's like bitch i understand like heavily shoddy got a mouth on her on her okay heavily be ranking and just she she crucial when it when it comes to the mouth when it comes to the words heavily is crucial af okay and so that's kind of a problem though when you're doing it to your friends in a sense of like you're doing it in confirmation and validation to what the public is already saying about your friends that's the issue heavenly like this is yes a job y'all go back and forth with each other but certain friends you know you typically because I value this friendship, I'm not going to cross a certain line, right? And Miss Heavenly ain't been doing that. She don't believe in the line. She believe in going to hell, to purgatory, okay? So that's kind of hard to, you know, to try to respect when it's like, damn, I thought you was my friend. Like, yeah, we may go back and forth, back and forth. We may disagree on things, but talk about people's relationships. Talk about people, man, not having a job, you know, staying on the couch when she did that shit with Simone, you know um she don't really she don't fuck with toya like she does not she though she low-key high-key don't fuck with toya a lot of the women don't fuck with toya because they're all career women which is why in the beginning they all looked at toya kind of like this is what you do and there's no shame really in being a housewife but it's just kind of like the type of housewife that toya is is real take 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 and it's like you're taking and then being upset about what it does to your husband. He's having to work to afford your bougie ass lifestyle, trying to keep up with the Joneses. And she's basically trying to show the other ladies like Dr. Heavily and Simone in particular, I think um, about like, Oh, I can, I can do the same things y'all do. Shoot. Like, you know, but it's like, you're not the one working for it. Like, Eugene is and I think subconsciously like Toya's always trying to show the ladies up like I can keep up with y'all I, I don't do nothing I keep up with y'all just the same but hey they can do that Toya they got businesses that can support that there's a difference between having a business that's bringing reoccurring money right and that can ha- handle you know a business can circulate on its own but y'all's household can't circulate on its own Eugene is the one circulating and he's human. So nigga is getting tired. He literally said, we saw it in the preview. He's like, I'm not enjoying this anymore. Like I'm tired. Like, and I think a lot of it has to play with Toya point blank period. But nonetheless, Contessa, it was like, you know, we need to confront heavily because she's done this a lot of times, you know, going after her friends, Toya gets it. Um, like Simone gets it. Like everybody gets it. And it's just kind of like, Contessa's mad, but it's like, are you mad because of what she said? Or are you mad because she said it to everybody? And I think that's what it is. Two truths can exist at the same time. The one truth of Heavily wasn't saying nothing like wrong. She really wasn't. Like, she wasn't saying anything that wasn't factual and that people weren't already seeing. Y'all said you were in a volatile relationship, i.e., the nigga is very mentally, emotionally abusive. Point blank, period. When you see that some, when somebody has come to you multiple times and say, hey, what you're doing hurts me. Hey, what you're doing like makes me not okay. And they continue to do it. That's considered abuse. That is mentally, emotional abuse. Scott with his lying, going to therapy ass, lying about texting other women, getting, you know, sexting women. Like Scott lied about that. Manipulation, right? Scott, you ain't slick. Do I think that Scott and Toya uh, and Contessa are better than ever as they've been saying? Hell no. Nah. When couples say that, them three words were better than ever. Bitch, they lying. Them, them, them words are the kiss of death to me. If you are better than ever, Contessa, why are you sitting there thinking about your exit? Talking about, oh, with your body building. Oh, I'll be ready for the next phase. You know, should something happen? It's like, you wouldn't be thinking that if shit really was good. 
But I think she's just Contessa is one of those women like I got to hold on. I got to hold on. She doesn't want to deal with the shame of, you know, being a divorce. Like she wants to be able to hold on because she saw, I think a lot of it plays into Simone and Cecil um, hanging on. They saw Simone and Cecil, you know, pull together and make the relationship work. But yo, that's them because their issues honestly was just communication. Like Simone and Cecil's issues honestly was literally just communication and lack of consideration for each other right but yours is like scott really don't give a fuck though like he don't give a fuck and he's he wasn't really willing to change until you said hey i'm getting my own house hey i'm doing all these things at that reunion cecil cut that bitch off tammy like they said look if this is what you like he did the work you know and it's never and, I, and he did the same thing too like niggas always it never is until like the woman's like i'm out then it's like okay i'll start doing everything and it's like why does it take me having to leave for you to get your shit together right um but nonetheless like the fact that everybody was saying contessa bitch like look you might want to start looking at your exit plan that says something contessa that all of the women were like you don't gotta hold on like you know do like you need to do what's best for you, especially with having daughters and your kids seeing that and how vocal they were about everything and how involved Scott was making them and everything. That nigga is toxic, point blank, period. Um, but yeah, Contessa and Toya basically talk my heavily and getting in that ass because they tired of it. So Anila, you guys, y'all know Anila got that bougie ass house. Y'all, the house is nice. It's very hard to pull off a black and white aesthetic without it looking like Mad Hatter, but I love the print of the counters the gold accents like anila did the damn thing um oh my god spam quit calling me decline um another thing about toya too what the fuck like you've been on this show how many seasons and you got nothing like no business no opportunity like nothing like everybody knows when you get on these shows you figure out something you figure out something because when the shit ends what you gonna fall back on? Because the Bravo checks we all know are the bigger checks in most people's, you know, and bank accounts. That's their biggest one. So it's like, what are you gonna do to replace that? Because Toya, you're not gonna stay on here all the time because low key, you might be on your way out. Okay? You're not really bringing to merch that somebody else can't bring to, you know? And it's like, you love to drink wine and set a home all day. Find the wine, women. You know, start a wine, you know? You like tennis, like started like a tennis subscription club, like something like that. It's just kind of like, what the actual hell, Toya, are you doing? <laughs> I just don't get it. Like, I don't get it. Bitch, if I'm on a show, I'm doing everything. You see Jackie ass and expanded to Ulta and online, all that type of stuff. Like, what are you doing? Um, But yeah, no, Anila, she came home boxes of shit at the front door she's like more packages and and kieran was like the fuck and she was like oh no i get the i guess these are you know blog 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 you know clothes and all that type of stuff you know and neela's like oh i gotta do this this and this and this and this and it's like girl quit lying you get this shit checked off by the nanny and the system and it's okay i think moms y'all need to stop being ashamed of saying bitch i need a help i got an assistant and a nanny because it's just like and we also do need to stop shaming women for doing that because mothering is hard like that shit is hard i'm an auntie i ain't no mama but when i have my niece and nephew like my niece and my nieces and nephew um 10 11 and two years old that shit is hard you know especially when you're doing it by yourself and you get help you better take that motherfucking help especially if you have money um yeah and so she was like, oh, I got the packages. I didn't buy it. And Kira was like, you do know I get the Amex, you know, receipt, right? Like, I see the receipt, right? And the boot she pulled out, though, was super cute. But when they walked in, the nanny had a nice little candlelit spread. And Anita was like, this bitch want to raise. Like, yeah, you, you got the money. You spent an extra million dollars on that house, bitch. You got the money. But that's not what it was. The nanny was like, okay, you guys, I love you. But you know I'm leaving, right? And Kieran and Nina looked at each other like, where? She's like, I'm going to Houston. And Nina was like, for how long? Like, you coming back, right? And she was like, no, you guys. Like, I got my family, my grandchildren. You know, like, I need to go spend time with them. Like, as you get older, you realize 
time spent with people is literally the most exp- time is the most expensive thing because you don't get it back you do not get time back so spend it with family friends like people want to have memories with you like you know so anil was so damn concerned like what are we gonna do and it's like well bitch can you at least say you know appreciate your help you know we are part of our family we love you like she said she's like you're a part of our family you know and it's like well she'll find you another one i'm sure the kids will be sad like you know nannies do kind of low-key become a part of the family nannies and and assistants and maids and you know all that type of stuff like that they low-key become a part of the family because they're around you know and anila was just worried about well, what the fuck i'm gonna do with these kids like who am I going to replace you with? Girl, Anila was sad, okay? But basically, the grandma was like, the nanny was like, yeah, I still got to go to my kids. I love your kids, but I need to see my family too. Your family, but my family, right? And so Anila was like, God dang. Like, I'm sure she would have preferred giving that woman a raise now. Um, So moving on, we have um, Simone and Cecil sit with her son, Miles, and uh, his girlfriend, I think like Andrea or something like that uh michael i we need to see michael like michael is hilarious i'm sure he's been living it up and fucking it up in college because he used to joke about that like at the house like oh like condoms and stuff like that so we know he getting it in boys in college and we know college is where you you start sowing your oats your your wilds okay so miles i wonder what he's oh no he's back in college so they were talking about his classes and so the girl Andre and him been together about a year and a half. And, you know, obviously Simone and Cecil like, you know, this is kind of a long-term thing. We're really proud to see that with him. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure the first thing Simone thought and Samiso thought when he got that girlfriend was, damn, she ain't black. I don't care what nobody say. We all know this. When you start, especially your sons, when they start dating and is they don't bring a black girl home, you low-key be hurt. Because it's like, damn, damn, the idea of like, you know, black love and black you know legacy just out the window huh um but yeah you know she cute or whatever like she holds him to like his classes and stuff and i really appreciated simona cecil talking to him as he was like you know y'all been to get been together a year but that honestly ain't shit like being with somebody a year is a long time but not really because like people can hide who the fuck they are for longer than that you know we've seen it like Men in particular, they be hiding all they, they bullshit. And back in the day, you didn't find out until the funeral, this nigga had three extra kids inside the tracks, you know? People can hide themselves. They show they representative. But nonetheless, I really appreciate that they asked him about, you know, their relationship and what would you say as advice. And it's advice that most people give in relationships. It's about communication, being able to compromise, and not always trying to be right. And someone looked at Cecil like, huh? Guess you could learn something from your son, huh? Um... And the girl talked about how, you know, she has a harder time compromising, but it was good that they are having those type of conversations with their son. Um, and then, of course, Cecil and Simone talk about writing a book because they went through their shit now. They went through their shit, but I'm glad to see that they came out on the other side. I really enjoy Simone, Jackie, um, and her writing that book. We'll see how it turns out because they said they started back from when they met in college, so... That's, that's, that's a lot of time that some shit could have been fucked up, but they're going to write about it, okay? So we'll see how that book turns out. We see Quad with her son, uh, not son, her nephew, Mason. He's so cute with his old country cute self. His little, he's just so cute. And she was driving him to school. She's like, why would you ride the bus? He like, them kids is maniacs. They loud as hell. We try to get them to be quiet. Like, I get it, Mason. You young and already don't want to hear noise. But when you get older, ex- extra excess noise, you don't fuck with it. You just don't. So he's like, I can't be on the bus with them hoes. Like, no, that's torture. Um, but it was super funny. And like, at least Quad gets to fulfill kind of like that helpful maternal side to her. I think that she had. I think Quad would have been open to kids, but just not with Greg. Like, she didn't want kids. And Greg went to some, and it's like, I'm not going to bring kids into this ugly ass, toxic ass situation ladies 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 if you are in a toxic unfulfilling non-mutual relationship kids will not fix the problem giving that man kids is the last thing you need to do because you think that he's going to be a kids are stuck with the women point blank period it ain't no oh like he's he's gonna he's gonna know you're gonna Oh, we, we, he, you think you're going to be trapping him, bitch? No, you trapped yourself. 
Like, we need to quit thinking this idea of having a baby is going to trap the man to be with you. No, bitch, you trapped yourself. Like, you trapped yourself and now having a whole ass connection to a man who really ain't worth shit. So, I think it was just the fact that it was Greg. But nonetheless, it was super cute, that scene. He was like, I can't fuck with them kids on that bus, basically. Mm -mm, nope, I would rather ride in this expensive ass Tesla, SMR, Mercedes, whatever quad got, and take my ass to school. Um, so, yes, yeah, so Heavenly has the uh her heavenly beauty salon i love the fact that y'all heavenly smart she's a smart cookie she's a smart ass bitch y'all and i love the fact that she has something that she's gonna pass down to allura you know allura's gonna have like the hair the hair uh beauty supply her son he's in learning how to flip houses like it is anything that heavenly and damon are doing they are raising some very self-sufficient kids and her being able to do all that and accomplish all that is why a lot of people look at toy like what the fuck you doing like you ain't gonna do nothing with this platform toya that says a lot like you're comfortable like you're lazy like i just i i could read toya the fuck down all day y'all sitting here moving houses and shit because y'all trying to play keep up with the joneses with your old i want to dress from ross make it seem like burberry ass like i can't i can't i can't but nonetheless, uh, Jackie's coming with her products. You know, she's got it into Ulta and all these type of stuff. Like, Jackie doing the damn thing. She got money, okay? Jackie got that long money. So, Toya, you trying to keep up, bitch. You ain't. Like, you you ain't even in the race at this point. Like, it's not going to happen. Trust me, it ain't going to happen. Um, but, yeah, so Jackie's, like, set up. And, and Heavenly's like, bitch, you trying to take down my spot? Like, you trying to do... Girl, you taking up all the, the, the space. But she, she was, like, saying hey to everybody. The shoes were ugly as fuck that Heavenly was wearing. Y'all know Heavenly ain't necessarily the, the greatest dresser. She fucked that whole outfit up with them shoes. And I low-key did not like the wig. But um, it was funny because she was trying to teach the ladies how to walk. And I was like, bitch, you just now learned how to walk. And then she got down and she's like, she started dipping it. I said, okay, now you keep dipping it and you, you going to go down and can't get back up. Remember, you knocking on, look, you knocking on Mature's door. Uh, but yeah, so she has Jackie, Quad, and um, who else did she have walking the show? Jackie, Quad, and I think Simone? It was somebody else. But they were walking in the show. She has a man called Mr. Wright because he got funeral homes. Hey, the fume business, that is, uh, that's money, okay? That, that's money because people are always dying. Um, yeah, so... Um, she brings him around. She said, he's still wearing that suit from 25 years ago. And he did. He showed it looked like an Uncle Ruckus ass nigga. So he walked to the back. And we see Nikki Natural, who was on Love & Hip Hop, um, I think Atlanta or Miami or something like that. And she's like, oh, I'm from Miami too. And so they shake hands. And they low-key had a moment looking at each other. And Haley's like, all right now. And she, she knocked the head, all right now. And Nikki Natural's like, you married? He was like, no. And she, she tried to scooch on, scooch on over to that man. We know it's going to really happen. He's going to call her up after this show. Baby, what you want? What you want? What what can daddy do for you? What, what can you do for daddy? Like, he one of them niggas. What, what, what can I do for you, but you do for me? <laughs> uh, Nikki Natural knew where the money reside. Where the money reside. Okay, Nikki Natural out there thotting and bopping for the coin city girl central but all the ladies are looking at her like damn nikki can you not make it as obvious like what you doing but yeah uh, heavenly you know fulfills that deal with the funeral homes the big business hey she said dead people need wigs too and it's kind of like what well, she is like he i think contessa and toya said something about it and contessa she sees all the other ladies walking and she was like oh your friends are walking and heavenly said exactly what everybody's thinking like bitch y'all ain't talked like why would you she call you up to walk in the show and y'all ain't talked in two three months like Contessa's looking for reasons, like just extra reasons, because she is mad at Heavenly. Anything that Heavenly does, she's going to take like as an insult or as a shot to her. But it's like, bitch, sit down and talk to her, which we'll see next episode. But they do the the fashion show. Laura walks out there. Uh, she dips in front of Daddy. She said, "You see, he's I see you, Daddy, with them them outfits he need to fix. Oh Lord, them, them. Damon, working them outfits, buddy. You are not a boy, Damon. Okay." You cannot wear an unfitting outfits anymore. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was pretty much the show. They ended with the fashion show. Quad came out. Uh, I did not like the wigs that they put on them, though. I get they were trying to show, like, versatility, but they just chose the wrong wigs. Jackie looked good in that fight, that big, that dress, though. That black dress was so... Ooh, Jackie looked good, okay? Body is tight and right. 
Um, but we'll see next week. And Tess is kind of like bowling over with, with Heavenly. So y'all tell me what you feel about the episode. How do y'all feel about Contessa and Heavenly business? What do you guys think about Toya and this living situation, her money and houses and Eugene working on time and how she feels about it? And what do you guys think about Contessa and Toya? Like y'all making up now? Y'all friends now? Or y'all got to do it because bitch, y'all ain't got nobody to film with. Cause that's what it's looking like. But y'all follow my Instagram and Twitter and I will catch you guys later. Bye.